Jürgen, a, a lot of fans flying out for this match. What is your message to them? <laughs> yeah, um, enjoy yourself, I would say, yeah? so in, in the right manner, because I heard that in Madrid the barkeepers are a bit worried about um, the Liverpool invasion, or British <laughs> invasion, um, and um, yeah, and there's no, no other message, yeah? because they, I know that they will be um, on their toes from the first second of the game when they have a ticket, hopefully they all have a ticket, and um, then we will do our job as well, so that's it. How important are the Liverpool fans to you doing your job on the pitch? Unbelievably important. It's the, re the main reason for why we do it. It's uh, the interest of the people. It's the reason why we play professional football. Uh, it started that way around. Eh? Some people thought it's a nice game. Some people thought it's a nice game but don't want to play, can't play, whatever, and watched it. And um, the money came much later and increased the, uh, with increasing quality, increasing interest and all that stuff. And so it was like that. It was a, the, the group was pretty close. It was players and supporters. Nobody else, and um, that's still the mother and father and grandparents of the game. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I like that part. That was one of the reasons why I loved football so much, even as a kid already. So how are you feeling about this team? Very good. It's the best team I ever had it's, 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 it, it, it feels on one side really good to say it because it's the truth on the other side it feels like that's not nice when you think about the the, the 2011 the 2011 2012 team of Dortmund but, but this team was brilliant as well but we only had it for a year pretty much or two years and then it, other people took the players that will not happen here so um, we will we will stay together and that makes it so so exciting and um, yeah it's a, 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 a really good group, we have to say. Really good football players. What I like the most about them is that they are, as, as, per, as people, uh, even better. So that um, makes it really enjoyable to work with them. How, how different is it to this time last year? Everything is different. Last year we were a big surprise. In, the, in general, we had to play the qualifier and then we went through until the final, that's just a surprise. Uh, with the games we played, obviously, but we were a really, a really exciting team, like a flying, um, yeah, a flying uh, force. And, and uh, this year we were much more mature, uh, brought in obviously a couple of players, used the experience from last year. It's come, we have so many results, uh, consistent results. We are much more mature than last year. It's, uh, that's makes it, that makes, it, makes everything different. And um, so I'm pretty excited about the opportunity to try it again. I mean, you say it's more mature. I mean, are you still playing heavy metal football, as you described it? Or has it changed? Look, I, I, I had to explain this word already 500 times. I never, I, I, when I said it only because somebody asked me about the difference between me and, and Arsene Wenger. And I didn't know Arsene Wenger at that time. I only watched his team playing. And then I said, OK, obviously, they might be anyway different. It's clear. And that's when I used that to, to try to, to make the, the, the difference clear. Since then, I get constantly confronted with that name. And it was never, I was never trying to play heavy metal football, actually. What I want to play with my teams is, is, is a, a game which is based on a, uh, on a very, very good organization. And um, on the other hand, it must be very lively, being brave, try something. Um, if you don't try something on a football pitch, it's a waste of time. So um, you try means it's not perfect, means it can fail. If it fails, no problem, try again, try it differently, whatever. So a really lively approach is, my, um, is the game I, life, uh, I like to watch. And what's your approach to actually setting your stars free? You know, to, to be able to be part of the team, but also to show their unbelievable skills. They are smart enough to know that you cannot win a football game with using only your unbelievable skills. That makes no sense. Then you have, uh, then you are like the Harlem Globetrotters, which is they don't play competitive games anymore. I think <laughs> there's a reason for <laughs> they because they are brilliant at what they are doing, but they have no organization really and stuff like that. So it's not for winning; it's for only entertaining. And for us, obviously, it's about winning plus entertaining. So um, and, and that's uh, that's why the boys are smart enough to understand it. That's why it's not so difficult to ask to ask him for um, yeah. First and foremost, being in a defending mood, especially when the other team has a ball. And and you're you're pretty sure that everybody is is fit. Yeah, 
we have still a few days to come. Huh? So um, the, you asked me that question four days, five days before the final. So yes, in this moment, apart from Nabi, um, they should all be fine. And how do you feel about the opposition? Really good team. Really, really good team. Um, we played them twice this year and we won both games, but it was twice. We were really good in both games and still only won it 2 1. At, at Tottenham, we played a brilliant game, one of the best away games we played this season. At home, we, we were for 35 minutes unbelievably strong. Then Tottenham came in the game, and in the second half, they changed the system and we, we didn't adapt that day. That will not happen again because we know Tottenham can, can um, play different systems, um, which is in a in a period when you play every three days, tough football games, you cannot prepare your team pretty much on everything about the opponent. And obviously that that day it was difficult for us to adapt to new to, to the other system. It was only a little change. It was a bit disappointing that we couldn't adapt, but it was like this. It never happened after that. Um, so really strong, good individuals, very well organized, um, fantastic manager. So how it should be? It's a Champions League final. I can't imagine one opponent where we would have said here, and, we, and I would have said, oh, yeah, it's only between landing in Madrid and starting the celebrations as a game, but who cares? So it was always clear there will be a really tough opponent. Some, some people say there are similarities between you and Maurizio Pochettino. Do, do you see that yourself in your approaches? Oh, for that, I, has, I should compare it to what I never did. I have no clue. So. Maurizio, I think, is a really a, a brilliant manager. So um, if somebody thinks I'm that as well, that's cool. Um, but uh, apart from that, I really don't know how he works. I see his team playing and that's impressive. I see how he reacts in different moments, that's impressive. Um, um, the calmness of him, that's impressive. A lot of things are really impressive about him. So, um, but if there are similarities, really, I don't know. He's younger, he was a much better player, he speaks much better Spanish. So, um, and um, okay, for that, my German is better. But um, that's it. Are you able to enjoy, enjoy this period at all? Yeah. You do? Yeah. It's, <clears throat> it's like a present. It's like um, um, because we, we, we lost that game last year in a very sp strange manner against the clear favorite Real Madrid. You can lose that game. Come on, that's clear. But they scored three goals. One was a world-class goal and one were, were really um, strange. And uh, we all knew that. And so you think, okay, it would be nice if we could come back to put that, to put that right. And then one year later, we are here again. Yeah, and that's, um, that's, I'm, I'm really happy about the situation, about the moment. So it's all good. Um, let's go there and try everything. And bring back number six. That's the plan. Our number one, actually, because uh, we this team tries it now exactly like this the first time. I know for the club it would be number six, which is great. But um, for these boys, um, it would be number one and um, they would really deserve it. So um, hopefully we can do it. When you think forward to the next season, you're going to be facing Manchester City, who are still spending huge amounts of money. Can you... Can you, can you take them on and beat them without doing the same? First of all, we cannot do the same. Nobody can do the same. Um, and um, that's, that's it. We, we, we will see that. If they, um, whatever team Man City will have to, next year, it will be stronger. Pretty strong. And um, so this year was really interesting, I think, um, that we really, it looks like we lost the league in the two games against City, <laughs> with all the other games, apart from these, if you put these two games out, um, then we are in front of City, actually. That's, that's a strange situation which I never thought. And the year before, we had really with a good result, a very good result, at least at home against City, and, um, and um, lost the 25 points to them in all the other games. So we improved a lot, but in this decided moment, they were, they were slightly better than us, and it was not easy to accept. Will that be next year again? We first and foremost have to think about how we can um, line up again. We will have a strong team, no doubt about that. Uh, we'll be then again longer together. Um, that's the best news actually, that this really good team can say together, let's like investment if you want. Um, keeping a group like that together, that's I think the first time for a while that we have a bunch of world-class players and can keep them together. That, um, that's, our, that's our transfer business if you want. And do you think the money is making a difference? 
And is there anything sort of less sporting oh, well, about it? Of course, it? it's not a money. It's a quality behind. If you buy, you can make waste money. That a lot of people did that already in private life and in business as well. So you you spend an awful lot of money on the car which broke the day after. Uh, that, that that's wasting a waste of money. And so in this situation now, it's exactly like that. City is doing uh, is is uh, investing pretty well. Huh? They um, the sensational manager, sensational footballers around. So that's all clear. But we are we are where we are, and uh, that's what we will try again. And um, if they get a, again 100 points or close to 100 points, and congratulations, we cannot change that. What we try to do is to play a similar, if not a better, season than last year, which is um, quite a, a challenge. There's, there's, there is something symbolic this weekend, isn't there, about two British clubs in Europe playing the European final at this moment in British history. What do you think it tells us? <laughs> I said it already. I tried to make a joke of it and nobody got it. When I said in the, in, the, in the press conference that obviously four of the biggest teams in, in England want to stay desperately in Europe and, and, and there was absolutely no response. Over the head. Uh, I, I was like, whoop. Okay, then my, my, my average humor, obviously. Um, but what can I say? It's, um, there have happened so many things eh, in, the, in the world out there. The, the European um, election was obviously not only um, pretty surprising and maybe disappointing for a lot of people in England. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a strange moment. Um, I'm not 100% sure where it comes from. The generation I'm part of, we always um, enjoyed the situation we are in, like um, after a generation influenced by a, a, a disgusting, um, disgusting world war, our parents, if you want. Um, so, and they gave us always a feeling, so you live in the best time you can have. I'm the only, I'm, yeah, we are the generation who didn't face a war. So that gives you the opportunity to build constantly on the things you achieved in the past because a war destroys everything and you start new. So, and in this moment, people misunderstand that opportunity. It's a bit that we could build constantly. Yes, with all the mistakes we made, it's like in that period, it's not perfect, is this, and somewhere else is a war and that influenced the rest of the world by, by refugees and all that stuff. Um, the, the things I loved in my, when I, in my 50 years was I became always closer and closer and closer. I was 18 and um, came to, to, to England and met all these wonderful people here and, and, and felt at that time already in love with the country and was, was, wanted to, to live or work, whatever, um, for a couple of years in England when I'm older. So I, I achieved that, come here, meet so many wonderful people in a moment when the signs we get from other, from other, um, from other people is like, yeah, first and foremost, we have to make sure that we are doing well. With we, I mean, we, with water around, with a border around, with whatever, and what the other do, they should sort. That makes no sense in this, for me. I only say, I always talk about my personal opinion. And in these things, in a moment, a lot of politicians do again what other politicians did in the past as well. They always work with making people afraid of the future. If you don't react now, this and this and this will happen in the future. And the other people with a bit of a more positive view on the future, um, nobody listens to them, they are not there, I don't know exactly, or go again, maybe like in England, go as well only for their own things. I'm not sure, I don't know exactly what Mr. What Mr. Corbyn wants to do, uh, want to be prime minister or does he want to, to do the best for the country, I don't know it 100%. Um, but it's just not, not the best moment in the world. And we have in Germany very similar problems. Not exactly like this, because we didn't make a, break, a, a referendum. Um, but problems as well. And I think really we should still keep on going, try, keep trying to sort our problems together, because they are so similar. And um, it was a really good idea, and I hope we can continue on this path. A lot of people say you should go into politics one day. I, nobody's told it to me and I will never. I will never because I have too much common sense that I could survive in that business. Jürgen Klopp, thank you very much. You're welcome.